It is a brand new week, a brand new day, and a brand new hope today. We're so glad that you're hanging out with us. I'm Anna Schmidt, and I'm here with Tom Hollis. And for all of you Narnia lovers, we've got a fantastic conversation coming up. Tom, tell us about it. we got a brand new world, brand new week, brand new world. Well, uh, Noah and Nicole Stratton will be with us. They are from the Museum of the Bible, and I, I hope that you uh, have been to the Museum of the Bible or plan to go. It's tremendous. There's so much to see there, but they also have a world-class theater and they are doing a production of Prince Caspian. That is the second book in the Chronicles of Narnia series. And I have to tell you, I'm a big fan. I'm a huge fan, but I had a chance to talk to them and they're going to be sharing about us, what it means, why it's important and what they hope to accomplish with this production. It's amazing. It's an amazing production, what they've got coming. And there's so much good scripture tie in with the Narnia. Can't wait to talk about it. So we'll be diving into that. We'll also be looking at an inspiring story about what is going on at the southern borders. And then towards the end of the show, we're going to have some ministry time with the Holy Spirit, as well as Tom has a story for you. Story time with Tom. Story time with Tom. <laughs> Don't change the channel. No, it, it'll be good. Uh, and uh, you'll enjoy that a lot. But I do want to say to you, uh, maybe this is a situation today where you're going through something difficult. We, we've all gone through so many things. You know, Anna, I, uh, just this past weekend, uh, my, 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 uh, there was a funeral for my uncle, my dad's oh, brother. Yes. And, um, you know, he struggled a lot in his life, but in the last 25 years, he got right, gave his life to the Lord, served the Lord, mm -hmm. and that made all the difference. It wasn't where he started that mattered, or even the, the fight through the middle section. It was where he ended up that mattered. And uh, I got to give the eulogy, and I said that, because that's what really matters in life. It's not, that's again, right. it's not about where we start. It's where God takes us, and, and yeah. I know that he's rejoicing with the Lord today. Right. It doesn't yeah. matter what mistakes we have from our past. It yeah. matters that God makes us new, that there is a new beginning, a new life that he rebuilds, restores, and makes us into the, the man or woman he made us to be. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, if you need prayer, you can always call our prayer line. The number's on your screen. You can pray for, uh, get some prayer with someone who's there just to pray with you. That's why the prayer partner's there, just for you. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll have Noah and Nicole Stratton and a little bit of Narnia. Discover what God's Word has to say about healing and deliverance. Best-selling author John Eckhart makes topical Bible study easy with his new book, Scriptures for Faith, Deliverance, and Healing. This handy reference is for those who want to have a greater understanding of healing and deliverance to incorporate God's Word into their prayers. Eckhart also includes targeted commentary to highlight key scriptures and life application. His spirit-filled perspective will enhance your time in God's Word and encourages the spiritual disciplines of memorization and meditation. Request scriptures for faith, deliverance, and healing as our thank you gift when you support Cornerstone Television this month. Request your copy today. If you want to strengthen the ministry of CTVN, share your best gift by visiting us online at ctvn.org slash donate or call us at 888-665-4483. Thank you for your partnership. Hope happens here. As some of you know, I'm a huge fan of the C.S. Lewis Chronicles of Narnia series and currently playing now through April 27th at the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. is the amazing theatrical production of Prince Caspian. Check out some of the highlights from this incredible, breathtaking production. Return to Narnia with C.S. Lewis's thrilling adventure, Prince Caspian. The world of Narnia comes to life on stage with stunning effects, dramatic storytelling, and life-size puppetry. The Logos Theater's original production of Prince Caspian, the world's first professional stage adaptation of this beloved tale, has captivated audiences from near and far. This is a very special Production. I was amazed at the quality and everything to do with this particular production. Fabulous performance, um, Broadway caliber. It was awesome. Phenomenal. Do not miss this play. Now you can see the show that fans and critics are praising from around the world on tour only at Museum of the Bible's World Stage Theater, 
March 1st through April 27th. For tickets, visit theacademyofarts.org slash Logos Theater on tour. Joining me now are Noah and Nicole Stratton from the Academy of Arts. Noah is the president of the Academy, and he also portrays Miraz in the play. And Nicole is the artistic director of the Academy and was the first person to adapt the entire Prince Caspian book into a theatrical script. Noah and Nicole, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Yes. So I'm excited. I know we talked before, uh, and uh, and you know I'm just excited to see the the play, and I need to get down there soon. But tell me about adapting such a beloved series. I mean, this is <laughs> one that a lot of people, such as myself, have read multiple times, read it to our children. We love it. Nicole, what was it like to write that <laughs> script? Well, thankfully, I am as well. I'm a Lewis fan as well, so that really helps to guide you as you're looking at the book instead of just looking at it as just another script. We, I really wanted to serve uh, the book and bring it to life for fans like myself and have us enjoy it rather than be thinking of all the ways the book was messed up. So um, it was enjoyable. We also got to work with uh, Douglas Gresham, like you saw in the video. He's the stepson, last living relative of C.S. Lewis. And he was the one that really helped to you know, vet my script. So that was exciting to be able to bring that to life. But if you know Prince Caspian, you know it's not anywhere, it's not lacking a lot of tricks. There are trees that come to life. You've obviously got the majestic Aslan you've got to bring to life, tails to reappear, telemarines to disappear, so many different effects. Um, Water so, God to blow up a bridge. <laughs> yeah, so there's a need too in bringing the books to life to get into theatrical puppetry. So. All of that was quite the challenge, but the Logos Theater is now becoming known for bringing the Lois books to life on the stage. So it was a real joy and blessing, and thankfully, fans have been very pleased with the adaptation so far. So that's good. Well, I mean, it looks stunning, looks amazing. And and, and your husband is the bad character. Your husband is Miraz. <laughs> what was it like, <laughs> uh, Noah, to play the, basically the evil character in the play? And he's such a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. I got typecast. It's sad. Um, <laughs> no, it's it's great playing playing the character. I, what we like to do in, in in these productions is be able to bring as much power and authenticity even to the evil characters because that then lets you see the good triumphing in even a more powerful way. Um, if there's a very simple, uh, pathetic uh, antagonist, um, it's not really that exciting to see them conquer to see the good win. And Lewis is brilliant at that, at portraying evil in a in a realistic way, not getting gratuitous or going over top with it, um, but portraying it that way. So portraying that character for me um, it is a joy because I, I like to portray it so that hopefully when he is taken down, everybody's cheering. So if everybody says they hate me, I, hopefully I did a good job. <laughs> That's and good. he will look completely different. We go with a Viking look for the Telm Greens because of how Lewis describes them. So he's got a, a face tattoo and a little ponytail and the whole works. I mean, they look pretty fierce. So. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you're putting the intensity into all the characters like that. But let me ask you about the Aslan character. I mean, this is the, this is the crux here. This is what matters is getting Aslan right. And, uh, and I, you know, I've heard people say, that as they've read the Chronicles of Narnia, they've felt a love for Jesus through that character mm -hmm. like they'd never felt before. And I, I've experienced that as well. What can you uh, tell me about uh, creating that character for stage and adapting it there? And for us, that was very important. Our ministry is a full-time ministry and we are out to not to reclaim the arts for Christ. And we want to bring honor and majesty to that character because of who he represents. So. We didn't want to move forward on the books till we knew we could do Aslan well. And thankfully, we have the ability in our ministry to build life-size puppetry. Now, we are the only Christian company that we know of that are doing it full-scale professional puppetry like this for the stage. There's only three other companies in the world, and they all source Broadway and West End. So we were able to use our abilities in the puppetry department to build a majestic lion that's run by three men, which we think is neat because three and one, they all work together as one to create this puppet and it is such a powerful it's, it's hard to call him a puppet but he has such a personality and power and then his voice is voiced by the founder of our ministry uh, Dr. Nikki Chavers who's my father 
And um, he founded this ministry in 1971 and persevered for years through many obstacles. And his heart for the Lord comes through in the way he voices it. And he has such understanding. So we have actually had people just tell us that as soon as Aslan came onto the stage and started speaking, they just started weeping. And um, so it's a very powerful connection he makes with the audience. So, and then he's only one of several puppets. We have two bears in this show, uh, yeah, two wild, a wild bear and bulgy bear. I was gonna ask you about that. How do you do all the animals? There are so <laughs> many talking animals in this book that when I, I read it to my daughter, I kept messing up which animal, which voice I was supposed to be using. <laughs> That's right. So a lot of it is that life-size puppetry uh, or even larger than life sometimes. Um, so yeah, we have seven uh, full-size puppets that are in this one. We have three large trees, one really large tree. It's amazing seeing those come to life, you know, when Aslan wakes the trees up um, to go win the day, help win the battle. Um, we have the two bears, we have Aslan. So it's just amazing um, what God has enabled our team to do. You know, we, we were begun, like Nicole said, 1971 with the mission of making the Bible come alive in minds and hearts through the power of storytelling. And Jesus constantly did that, right? With his parables, he, parables, he was telling stories. And so we love to follow that model as we are made in his image. He's the great communicator. And so we get to communicate as well and communicate truth. And we love C.S. Lewis and the way that he did that with his storytelling. Yeah, Nicole, let me ask you about that. What are you hoping? Uh, in fact, you can both respond. What are you hoping people to take away from this? When someone comes, maybe a longtime fan like me, the tough critic person who's going to come, or someone who's never read one page of uh, the Chronicles of Narnia, when they come away from this, what are you hoping to see? We are hoping what Lewis really hoped as he wrote the book, I believe, is all the books, is that they would engage in these stories and learn more and be drawn to know more about who Jesus Christ is in Narnia and then outside of Narnia in their own world. And I think it's such a message of hope. There is a message of faith all through, all through Prince Caspian. So I pray that they're encouraged to walk not by sight but by faith and to be able to take those next steps in their walk with Jesus Christ. And so, so far, even for our cast, that has been such an impactful thing to do this production because the messaging that Lewis has woven through this book is life changing. And so we hope it's more than a production. We hope that it is real encounter with the Holy Spirit and to be able to see these truths come to life. And of course, we want the fans to be so pleased. We want them not to walk away and be disappointed and Thankfully, as we've been performing this since 2017, we've had such great feedback. So if you love the books, you can't miss this. It'll really come to life. Absolutely. Well, let me ask you one, one final question. How are you two doing? I mean, this is a huge, <laughs> huge undertaking and you guys are at the point of this. What, uh, what has oh. it been like? Well, one thing that's come to my mind is the, the theme of sacrifice, Romans 12, 1 and 2. It's just reasonable service to give your life back as a sacrifice to the Lord. So, yeah, it's a ton of work. It's a ton of pressure, but it's exciting to be in God's work and in God's service. And every time we do a play, we follow that theme in that play. Uh, so the Prince Caspian, a following of sacrifice, of faith, has been beautiful to experience in our own lives as well. And we're grateful for Museum of the Bible. They've made this possible. Caspian has never toured before. It's too big of a show, I thought, but now it's touring on the road. So Museum of the Bible is being a forerunner and bringing professional Christian productions to the country. We hope Christians come out and, and, and support it. So thank you for helping us spread the word. And we have smart performance like literally in an hour. So we're excited and the team is ready to go. Well, I am so excited, Nicole and Noah. Thank you so much. Prince Caspian is playing now through April 27th at the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. Thank you, guys, and God bless what you're doing. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank we you appreciate for the time. It. Are you tired of just getting bills in your mailbox? Find inspiration instead by subscribing to the Cornerstone Television's Hope Today newsletter. Each month, we'll deliver good news about what God is doing in our region and world through CTVN's ministry. We'll keep you in the know about our latest special programming, and our full program guide will keep you connected to all your favorites. You'll also find a new Dashing Dish recipe every month. 
As you read our Hope Today newsletter, stay encouraged knowing your generosity and giving to CTVN is making a difference and building God's kingdom. We can't do it without you. Sign up today to receive your inspirational free Hope Today newsletter every month in your mailbox. Go to our website at ctvn.org news or call us at 888-665-4483. Thank you for being a part of our Cornerstone television family. Hope happens here. Oh, we really would love to send you our monthly Hope Today newsletter. Each month we feature a, a cover article that has just an inspiring faith-based story. We bring you encouraging testimonies of how God is working in our CTVN family and also through our Cornerstone Cares, which by the way, if you give to CTVN, a portion of all that you give goes to support many different missionaries and organizations around the world that are doing amazing things. And then of course we have our recipe. Yeah, yeah, tell me about <laughs> crock pot pizza, pizza soup. soup. That doesn't exactly sound great, but oh, you really? try these. Well, oh, maybe it does. Come on. You try these, don't you? You actually yes. try them before you put them in so there. So Dashing Dish is a program that we produce right here at CTVN. And every month I get to pick the recipe that goes into the newsletter and I make them, I taste them, I test them, make sure right. they're How good was for it? you. How was it? Oh man, I'm a pizza lover. Yeah. It was fabulous. My pizza is usually See, on a piece of bread. <laughs> you, know, on a, you on could a put crust. in pepperoni, sausage, mushrooms, <laughs> all the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that, that's that's important. It's important to know that there's so many good things in the newsletter. If you mm -hmm. don't have a subscription to it, just call the prayer partner and get your free subscription. Mm -hmm. Yes, and every Monday, if you stay with us, you know that we have Meaningful Monday. And this is just a story that we look for in the news that's inspiring, that will make your day. And so we're ready now for Meaningful Monday. Well, more than 4,000 people made professions of faith for Jesus Christ during evangelist Franklin Graham's 10-day God Loves You Frontera tour along the southern U.S. border. Graham said, we've had a higher response to the gospel invitation here than anywhere else I've preached in the United States. People are hungry and they are hurting. They're hungry for truth. And the tour began February 24th in Brownsville, Texas, and concluded March 9th in Chula Vista, California. And after seven stops, the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association reported that over 33,000 heard the gospel preached, while more than 4,000 surrendered their lives to Christ. Praise God. And we give great thanks to Milton Quintania from ChristianHeadlines.com for this inspiring story. I love it. You know why I love it? I love it because this has been so much of a political issue, so much about keeping the border safe, letting people in, mm -hmm. all that, back and forth, back and forth. It's been like a political football. What does God want in this situation? Can we stop for a second and say, what does God want? And what God wants always is that the gospel, Anna, would be shared with the people anywhere and sometimes right. people in desperate times are more open to the gospel than any other time. Mm -hmm. And so here is Franklin Graham bringing the gospel and bringing the love of Jesus Christ to the people who need it the most. And I say, praise God, 4,000 yeah. new souls into the kingdom. It's, it's a miracle. Like it's beautiful to see how God is working through his people. And remember like, we don't have to be Franklin Graham to tell people about the good news of Jesus Christ. As we heard Franklin say, like people are hurting and they are hungry. They are hungry for truth. And so God has strategically put you in a place where you have a circle of people that you impact each and every day, friends, family, your community. And so pray and ask God to just show you like who needs an encouraging word today, that conversation. Ask the Lord to help you have a strategic opportunity to be able to share God's love, his good news of salvation. And then we get the personal joy of seeing those around us come to the saving knowledge of Christ. It's quite the privilege. It is a privilege and it's fantastic. 
Well, I want to share a little story with you. I'm going to share a Narnia story with you. So please stay with me and let's see if we can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in this. In another one of the books, not Prince Caspian, called The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, one of my favorites, uh, the, there's a, a character named Eustace. He tags along with the uh, Narnia kids and he's a real pain. He's their cousin. He's a real pain in the neck. He just is always a, a problem and, and spoiled in so many ways. And, and they're traveling on a ship from island to island. And they stop at this one particular island. They don't know, but it's called Dragon Island. And uh, they, uh, Eustace ends up running off into the woods, uh, just misbehaving completely ends up going into a cave and uh, finding a bunch of gold there. Now, if you've read some stories, you might know you don't want to be laying on gold that a, that a, a, a dragon has. And uh, he actually puts a, dragon, a piece of the dragon gold up on his arm. And what happens? He turns into a dragon. And uh, he flies back as a dragon to his shipmates on the beach. And they're afraid of him, of course. Then they find out who he is. He can't talk, of course, because he's a dragon. <laughs> and, uh, but he, he, uh, he writes in the sand and he lets them know who he is. And uh, anyway, he actually becomes a, a, a better person as a dragon than he was as a little kid. And, um, but he's still you know, kind of feeling sorry for himself. Goes off into the woods, uh, lays down beside a pool of water. And then Aslan shows up, the Jesus character. And Aslan tells him, you need to go into this water and bathe yourself. And he does. And he begins to peel off a layer of skin, kind of like you've seen a snake skin or a reptile does it. And that skin comes off, but he's still a dragon. And Aslan says, you need to go back in there again. And he goes back and he washes again in this pool. And he begins to see another layer of skin come off. And he does it a couple times, two or three times. And then Aslan says, I'm going to get involved. And he goes in there and he's a lion, right? And so he has his claws. And he begins to scrape this dragon skin off of Eustace. And layer by layer, layer by layer. And it says in the book, it hurt. It hurt, but it was good. And then... All the dragon skin comes off, and he's Eustace again. He's the boy again. And Aslan bathes him and clothes him, and he goes back, and he tells the story of how Aslan rescued him from being a dragon. Well, maybe we can see the spiritual lesson here, the spiritual parallel. The world, the flesh, and the devil has put everything on you, has put all kinds of layers of stuff on you all kinds of things. Our sin has put layers of hurt and pain and problems and falsehoods upon us. People have said things to you. Maybe it was your parents. Maybe it was a teacher. Maybe it was a bully. Said things to you. And, that, and you've taken that to yourself and it's become part of who you are. And God says, no, it isn't. That's not who I made you to be. You're not the dragon that you think you are. There's a person inside of you, the one I created, the one that the world, the flesh, and the devil has tried to obscure. But I'm here today, I'm here today to change all that. Because when we come to Christ, things change. Listen to this verse. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man or boy or woman is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. This is what that story is about. And God wants to do that for you today. What things have been put on you? What things has the world, the flesh, and the devil have people put on you that you're wearing like it's who you really are? And, and God's here today to say, no, that's not who you really are. He's going to put that claw in there. And you know what? It does hurt because we become used to those things. They become part of who we think we are. And sometimes it hurts to give them up. But when we come to Christ, all of a sudden those things are taken away and we become who we were meant to be. Everything's not perfect, but everything is right with God. That's where he wants you to be today. So just take a moment and say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Take these things away from me. Take these falsehoods away from me and let me live the life that you've created me to live. Anna, it's freedom in him. It is absolutely freedom in him. And uh, Tom, even as you are sharing the story, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm just 
allowing myself to get into God's presence. And I, I hope that wherever you're watching today, that you also just enter into God's presence because what we need is fresh revelation of God's incredible love for you and for me, that he formed you with his own hands in your mother's womb. And before you were ever born, he wrote a story of every day of your life that would cause you to be a person that a child of God, first of all, and that you would also be a person of great purpose and influence, but one who is made for relationship with Jesus Christ. And see, way back in Genesis 1 and the beginning of the Bible, we read how God made all of us perfect. You know, like Adam and Eve were perfect, but then they fell into sin because of the temptation of the serpent who we know is the devil, but God already had a rescue plan for them and for you in place by sending his son, Jesus, to die on the cross, to forgive our sins, to be the perfect lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice to take away all of our sins, all the shame, all the guilt, all the fear, all the things that took away the core of who God made us to be, and then we become a new creation in Christ. And so today, if you've never given your life to Christ, this is your chance to become a brand new creation where God makes all things new, where he revives and he rebuilds and restores. Let me tell you, I am living in a season of life where I am seeing the restoration of God in all areas where lives are being raised up and made new again. And God wants to make you brand new and put you on a path to receive his love and be the man or woman that he created you to be. So he's going to take those things off you. He's going to take the, that bad word that someone said about you. He's going to take the, 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 the things that, that years of abuse have put on you. And he's going to say, today is a new day. If you are in Christ, you're a new creature. Walk as a new creature in newness of life today. On tomorrow's Hope Today, are you in need of a miracle in your life today? Pastor Matt Brown shares his personal healing story and discusses whether or not Jesus still performs miracles today. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.